Hello noble ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Now today I would like to talk about Deadliest Warrior, the show. Now the reason why I have decided to make this brief video is because of course this is fiction and we all know that, I hope. But essentially what I'm trying to do is to make sure that we see things through historical eyes because the characters that are portrayed in this show are based on historical characters and the, the whole purpose of this video is to make sure we fully distinguish fiction from reality and then the other the other thing is also that some of these informations are also interesting I think they can be fun to know now as you know for those of you who don't know Deadliest Warriors this show where they actually have pit fights between historical characters. For example, knights, medieval knights against ninjas, samurai against Spartans, Roman legionaries fighting pirates and things like that. Now, from a historical point of view, of course, this is complete nonsense, but as a form of entertainment, I can understand it and I think it can also be fun. So I'm not going to say anything against that. I would like to begin with the figure of the knight, so I will dedicate this video to the knight. If you find this kind of videos entertaining, then let me know in the comments below, because if I find enough comments and likes, then I will continue and make a whole series about me debunking all the different figures and maybe even talking about the video game and, and see what mistakes, historical mistakes uh, they have there. Now, in order to thoroughly examine the knight, we need a better picture, so I found this other poster that we can use. Now, first thing I don't understand is why they have decided to give, give him this kind of outfit. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not sure about you, but as far as I'm concerned, this does not look very nice at all. It does not look cool. I would have rather had a knight in male armour and great helmet, like a crusader, or maybe a you know, full plate armoured knight. I think those two choices would have been much better, but here is what we have, so let's examine this. Now, let's begin from the armour. Um, as you can see, it's male armour, or at least I'm not even sure if that's actually knitted male. I hope it's not. Let's just hypothetically say that he's wearing male armour. And then he's wearing a circlet on it. This already gives us an idea, a clue to the era that we are supposed to talk about. So we're probably talking about 12th century, maybe 13th century for the least, but I'd say. Now the problem is that the helmet that he's using is a burgonet. Now a burgonet is instead a mid 16th century helmet. So now by the time Smith in technology evolved into that kind of helmet we already had these kind of exquisite full plate armors. So there is a huge gap of 250 years probably between the helmet and the male armor that he's wearing. Also remember the surcoats stopped to be used in the 15th century so again it does not make sense to have that helmet together in conjunction with a surcoat and male armor only. The shield is ex extremely thin and this actually puzzles me a little but for two reasons. Uh, first thing it's clearly made of metal which never actually and these kind of shields never really exist in the Middle Ages. This is a very important point. Um, there were no metal shields in the Middle Ages. Shields were made of wood. They could have uh, metal reinforcements, for example, the boss at, in the center of the of the shield, and sometimes edges of the of the shield would be reinforced with metal. But fully metal, full metal shields, not historical. They are 19th century fakes that were created to decorate people's houses. I even own one of these. Now, the fact that I own one of these is an important thing. Why is that? Because I am not rich by the slightest meaning of the word. A decorative sheet metal uh, shield can, can be purchased for 30 euros. So that's what we are talking about here. And I'm very, it's very strange because we have a huge, because we have spike behind all this. And I am sure that I have no budget problems. So I don't understand why purchasing something like this. Now going back to the helmet, I said it's a burgonet and it probably is by the looks of it. I would like to compare the helmet with real examples of, of burgonet. Now the first thing is, and if you commonly see burgonets, most of the times you see that they have no face plate, but other times they did, so that's not that's not a mistake, that's actually accurate. Uh, the face plate was added obviously to increase protection. It could be removed during combat just like many other visors 
uh, with a pig-faced helmet, for example, the hound skull and so forth. Although it would actually work the opposite way, so you would not hinge it up, but you would hinge it down. Now, to examine this more in details, a burgonet is mainly made of four parts, namely the main skull of the helmet, we have the brim, we have the cheek plates on the sides, very similar to Roman cheek plates, too, so they are movable, and then we have the face plate, as I said. Now, the problem with this helmet is that this knight, essentially, did not know how to wear the burgonet. The cheek plates need to be closed first, and then you close the visor in the Maximilian and the faceplate in the burgonet. Now, in the case of the Maximilian helmet, that's simply because otherwise you, you, you simply just can't close it. But in this case, it's even worse, because you can, as you can see, close it. They did. They managed to close it. But they covered the whole face in gaps, because, as you can see, the brim does not fit. It was supposed to fit in the, in the split that you have in the cheek plate. That's why that's there. And as you can see, it doesn't fit in this case, because he closed the face plate first. And also, I'll show you a real example. As you can see here, if you close the cheek plate first, then the face plate will overlap, because it will close on it, over it, making sure there are no gaps and granting double layered protection to the face. So I am sorry to say, but this night is probably not going to last a night. Pun not intended. All right, then. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a very simple and brief video to talk about this thing. And please let me know in the comments below what you think. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content from the Metatron's channel.